Greetings everyone and welcome. My name is Alfred and in this course we're going to discuss about C sharp step by step. We're going to to start from the beginning and we're going to be advancing as we continue until you reach somewhere where you're comfortable creating applications using the C sharp programming language. So let's begin with the introduction. C sharp pronounced as C sharp is a general purpose object oriented program language developed by Microsoft. Its paradigm is based on the concept of classes and objects, just like many other object oriented programming languages like Java. Each class acts as a template for generating objects and has methods and fields to define its behavior. So it means that um, the classes are compra they have methods and they have uh, fields which define what this class exactly does. Each object has properties that it identifies with. What we are saying here is, for example, if we have a company and this company has uh, customers, we take this customer as an object and each customer could have an address or each customer has a name and these are what we are calling the properties of an object so we view the customer as an object and the customer address or customer phone number or name will be the property for that object so for example if we have uh, a car here is our class this car class could have the status which would look to see if this car is working or not it could also have another field uh is new which will which will tell us if this car is new or it's used and then it could have some methods, for example, it could have a mechanism on how to move the car and also another method on how to stop the car. So under the move, we're going to construct our mechanism or the logic that will move the car and under the stop, we're going to have the logic that stops the car from moving we can use this car class to construct some objects and these objects could be the types of car generated by the car class we could have for example the toyota being generated by the car class which is going to give us a type of car and also same as uh, same object uh, nissan here which could also be generated by the car class etc etc you could generate more cars from the car class so we say that Toyota is an object of the car class or we say that Toyota is an instance of the car class the objects that we generate from the classes they have properties for example the cars that we generate could have color, model, and other properties that we've not mentioned here. But I know that you can think of those properties of a car that we've not mentioned here. But to just to be brief, this is how we construct our objects. Then we have the object properties from the uh class here the car is our class which has some fields like status and is new it has some methods that is move and stop and it can generate some object uh, here we've shown an example of Toyota and Nissan and each object has properties and here we've mentioned an example of color and model so if we were to construct this class in code, it looks something similar or near this uh, class here, whereby we have public class, we call it car. 
Now we have some fields here. We have the first field, which is the status, and we equate it to one. Now we have another field, which is is new, and we equate to false. And here we have our method that we call mob beneath which we're going to have the logic of moving the car. We have another method which we call a stop and inside this method we're gonna have the logic to stop the car. And down here we have two instances of the car class. The first instance we call it Toyota and we just instantiate the car class to get the new object from the car class. Same we do for the Nissan instance and this is going to give us an object of the of this car and we're going to call the instance uh, Nissan. So in short that's how we can construct an OOP class and inside we have methods then from this class we're going to generate some objects and we also have some fields for this class which defines the behavior of the class itself so we're going to stop here in this video when we come back we're going to see some use cases and where we can use the c sharp to to make the, some of the applications that will help us to solve some of the problems that we face in everyday life.